quantum error mitigation had been proposed prior to Endo's research. However, it had no practicality due to its limitations, such as only being available for use when there is complete knowledge beforehand that a specified error would occur. Based on the characteristics of incomplete errors that could actually be measured through experimentation, Dr. Endo proposed the world's first method that would allow quantum error mitigation to function against unspecified errors and significantly expanded the range of application for quantum error mitigation. Endo is also researching hybrid quantum or classical algorithms, which are believed to be optimal for NISQ computers in parallel. So with this short introduction, I would like to invite Dr. Suguru Endo, who will talk on quantum error mitigation and its application. So, Dr. Suguru, please. Uh, thank you very much for a very nice introduction. Um, as you introduced, I invented the uh, first uh, practical quantum error mitigation method. And uh, uh, since then, uh, I um, explored the possibility of quantum error mitigation in these days. I think quantum error mitigation is useful for uh, fault tolerant quantum computing and even uh, quantum methodology. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, because I'm proud of these works, so I'd like to introduce. And uh, um, if uh, you are not familiar with this method, possibly it's better to ask me uh, if you have any question. Uh, you you can maybe you can interrupt me anytime. Anyway, I will start my presentation. Okay, um, so I'm Suguru from NTT, NTT Computer and Data Science Laboratories, and I'm working on quantum error mitigation. Quantum error mitigation is a hardware-friendly uh, error minimization technique, especially for NISC. Uh, in today's topic, I consider a uh, fault uh, tolerant quantum computing paradigm. I was uh, originally uh, quantum error mitigation uh, is, is sort of to be useful for NISC devices. And yeah, sometimes it helps the experiments and uh, to extract the good results. And uh, yeah, so quantum error mitigation is uh, kind of the opposite concept of the quantum error correction. Um, quantum error correction uh, uses the encoding of the qubits. Like, so we express one logical qubit uh, by many qubits. So, uh, so for example, here uh, I explain, uh, I use the example of the three qubit code, and one logical qubit is encoded in three qubits. And uh, um, yeah, by doing this, um, we can correct the errors, uh, by, we can uh, detect the errors and the correct the errors, uh, uh, obeying the result of the syndrome measurements. Uh, but uh, when we use this encoding strategy, um, the number of the logical qubit is reduced. So <clears throat> considering this simple example, um, the number of the logical qubit is uh, uh, becomes three times uh, smaller uh, than the original one. And uh, the number of qubits in NISC device is restricted. So uh, kind of alternative technique. Uh, for reducing errors has been proposed, and uh, that is uh, quantum error mitigation. And the quantum error mitigation basically does not use encoding. Um, actually, these days there are some methods which use the encoding, but the basically uh, quantum error mitigation does not rely on encoding. Okay, and uh, yeah, error mitigation has been proposed by to the to these legendary papers. Uh, from Oxford group and the IBM group. And I significantly developed this method to make the method practical. And uh, I'd like to introduce, ah, uh, oh, sorry, maybe I should, ah, oh, sorry, I should have expanded this. Sorry. Um, uh, anyway, I'd like to explain the concept of quantum error mitigation. Um, so suppose uh, the horizontal axis is a calculation result uh, basically, quantum error mitigation considers uh, um, expectation value of the observable. So for the uh, so considering the VQE, um, so it can uh, reduce the error for the expectation value of the Hamiltonian energy. And uh, suppose the um, 
horizontal axis is uh, expectation value of the uh, observables such as uh, energy in the VQE calculation or something like that. And the uh, vertical axis is the probability. Uh, so like, so uh, quantum mechanics is the stochastic theory. So it has a short noise. So, you know, we uh, we generally have the short noise around the ideal expectation value. And uh, I, I think of the case, the distribution is described by the Gaussian distribution when we consider the suffi sufficiently large number of samples. And uh, suppose this is uh, noisy free, uh, this is uh, probability distribution of the expectation values uh, without the noise. Uh, here, uh, the noise is a physical noise, uh, like T1, T2, and, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, please consider um, physical noise is different from the short noise. And basically, quantum error mitigation is a technique for mitigating the physical errors, like T1, T2, OK? And uh, so anyway, suppose this is uh, um, probability distribution of the ideal result without physical noise. And the, in the presence of noise, um, the probability distribution is shifted to the wrong one, uh, which has a wrong expectation value. And uh, uh, what the error mitigation does is like shift the dis noisy distribution around the ideal uh, probability distribution. Uh, but, but there should be a cost that is a broader variance of the probability distribution. That means we needed to have more samples uh, to achieve the same accuracy as the uh, free one. Okay. And uh, let me give you the one example. So it's the most simple, uh, but uh, this is also very powerful. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, extrapolation is a very simple example. So I'd like to explain about this. And this is frequently used in experiments, so that is also very useful and powerful. And uh, the horizontal axis, uh, horizontal axis is the error rate, and the vertical axis is uh, um, expectation value, the result we want to have. And uh, in the presence of noise, in the presence of noise, um, the uh, result is different from the ideal one. And we'd like to suppress the effect of noise. And uh, suppose this is the achievable error rate um, in the quantum circuit. And in that case, we cannot reduce the error rate any further. But uh, by using some technique, uh, we can boost the error rate. And we can also obtain another result, which has a different boosted error rate. And uh, by extrapolating these two points to estimate the ideal value, we can suppress the noise. And this is uh, our extrapolation technique and also called zero, zero noise, zero noise extrapolation, ZNE. And suppose the case uh, lambda equal to two. In this case, the estimated value, error mitigate, error mitigate value, can be described as this. And when we calculate the variance of the estimator, estimated value, we can calculate the uh, variance of the error mitigated uh, result uh, as this. And as I said, uh, the variance of the error mitigated value uh, becomes larger. And uh, yeah the variance becomes larger. So that means we need to have more shots to achieve the same accuracy uh, as the noise free circuit. So Endo, uh, yes. may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, Z bar epsilon zero and Z bar two epsilon zero, this may be uh, considered as a random variable. So are these two random variables independent? Uh, yes, I, I, I just assume so. Uh, like, uh, so, we can, you know, have say, um, at a, at one time we can, you know, just uh only measure this result, and after a long time we can independently measure this result, and in that case, like have said, we can perhaps ignore the uh, correlation between them. Uh, but uh, in general, 
um, they are correlated. So in that case, we have to consider the correlated effect of these. And uh, yeah, that would be an uh, interesting uh, research direction, I believe. So uh, in, uh, anyway, in this explanation, I just ignore the correlation between them. So it if is, they have some correlation, then I think some covariance term is also there, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So in that case, we have to uh, increase the effect of the covariance in this, in this, oh, uh, nice. and uh, that may boost the uh, variance more or something. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, is this answer make sense? Yes, yes. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much for a very nice question. Okay, then I move on. So, and uh, um, actually, there are many, many quantum error mitigation already proposed, and uh, but there should be some criteria uh, which indicates a good error mitigation, and. Uh, um, the condition for the quantum error mitigation is like it should be hardware friendly, like I said. So the motivation quantum error mitigation has been proposed is like we do not want to use encoding, and um, which reduce the uh, effective number of um, logical qubits. So uh, if possible, we should not uh, use encoding or something like that. Anyway, it should be hardware friendly. Uh, which should uh, put the thousands on the quantum hardware itself, something like that. And uh, as I said, uh, the, you know, uh, the variance of the error mitigated value uh, basically increases. And uh, um, and uh, actually, the sampling overhead is different from uh, uh, from method to method. So, uh, for example, the sampling cost of, uh, of the um, extrapolation and the other methods like probabilistic error cancellations are different. And so, you know, we have to consider the um, sampling costs. And also, the bias, the bias is uh, a difference from the uh, difference of the error mitigated value and the mode free value, and the bias should be small. And then, also, uh, we can consider other conditions like how say so. So whether we should use the information of the noise or not, or something like that. For example, probabilistic error cancellation fully uses the uh, information of noise, um, but sometimes uh, you know um, noise character noise characterization by uh, a tomography, uh, gate set tomography uh, is not uh, experimentally friendly. So in that case, we I want to consider as a strategy, and in that case, um, buzzer distillation technique, which does not use the information of noise, uh, maybe they're useful or not, but the buzzer distillation uses uh, the copies of the quantum states. It is uh, effective with the en uh, encoding, and also the sampling cost of the buzzer distillation is not so small or something like that. So there, there are a lot of things we should consider in quantum error mitigation. So, yeah, so it's important to pick up the best strategy of quantum error mitigation depending on your experimental hardware or some theoretical assumptions and so on. Okay, I'll move on. And uh, yeah, actually, there are many, many uh, works uh, from my group. Um, uh, yeah, like my colleagues and the collaborators are very uh, powerful and creative. So we um, made a lot of uh, progress these days. And today, um, uh, so, so for example, we applied the quantum error mitigation for forward to torrent quantum computing. It was published in uh, PRX quantum. And we also applied quantum error mitigation to quantum methodology, and it was published in PLL. And uh, we also considered the unified uh, framework of quantum error mitigation, which is called um, generalized quantum. Uh, subspace expansion. It was also published in PLM, and uh, we also and we also worked on the uh, theoretic theoretic information approach of quantum error mitigation, and uh, and we also derived the fundamental limits of the quantum error mitigation uh, by using the uh, language of tra tra trace distance. Uh, so we use the distance measure. We relate the distance measure to quantum error mitigation, uh, so, and so on. So Anyway, uh, we had a lot of progress these days. And today I'd like to talk about a uh, uh, new application of quantum error mitigation. Uh, one is uh, application to forward tolerant quantum computing and the other is uh, to quantum methodology. 
Okay, then yeah, I'd like to explain about this. Uh, we uh, actually uploaded this paper uh, like three years ago, and the title of this paper was Past Quantum Error Mitigation for Forward Trends of Quantum Computing. Uh, but after all, uh, we changed the title of the uh, paper um, uh, to very this long one Quantum Error Mitigation as a Universal Quantum uh, Universal Error Reduction Technique. A anyway, we changed the uh, title of the paper to this. Uh, so uh, please remember this uh, when uh, you are interested in this paper and when you try to find this paper. And uh, um, I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, early port tolerant quantum computing error. Um, these days, uh, there are some experiments about the uh, error correction, and the, the experiment is successful, but still the number of logical qubits uh, is, uh, as far as I know, just one. So it is classical, uh, it, it's totally, it can be totally classically simulatable. And uh, yeah, we call such error, classically uh, tractable FTQC error. Uh, and in this figure, uh, the particular axis is uh, logical error rate, and the horizontal axis is uh, number of the logical operations. And uh, yeah, anyway, we are now in classically tractable FTQC error because it is, it is just one logical qubit. And uh, but uh, after we increase the number of the logical qubits and uh, also logical operations, uh, we hit the uh, boundary. Like you know, we cannot sim simulate. We cannot classically simulate the dynamics of the quantum computer uh, in logical space. And we call such error like early uh, FTQC error. And uh, Still, we can uh, we should go uh, further, and uh, after that, uh, maybe we can um, uh, encounter the error uh, where we can achieve the practical application of the FTQC. Uh, for example, for simulating the chemical reactions, uh, chemical dynamics, and uh, uh, maybe for, uh, solving the uh, prime prime number factoring uh, Schwab's algorithms and so on. And uh, we call such error long-term FTQC error. And uh, we find that um, quantum error mitigation can uh, reduce the uh, uh, requirement of the hardware. Like, uh, for, so for example, we can reduce the required um, logical error rate uh, to this level in uh, default tolerant quantum uh, computing error. And even in long term uh, FTQ theta, we can also uh, reduce the requirement of the logical error rates and so on. Okay. And the, the how say, essence of our, our work is like when we use quantum error mitigation, um, the, how say, the number of the, uh, the total number of logical error in quantum circuit uh, can be unity. So like, so if the number of the logical error in quantum circuit is uh, is one or two, uh, so I mean the average number of the error events in the quantum circuit, if it is uh, one or two, quantum uh, error mitigation can help reduce that error. So we do not have to rely on uh, encoding uh, to reduce errors. So yeah. So we can uh, relax the, um, requirement. Uh, we can relax the uh, requirement of the logical error rate from this level to this level. So, yeah. And uh, actually, uh, there are a lot of, type of types of errors in port tolerant quantum computing, FTQC. And uh, there are mainly three types of errors in FTQC. It is decoding errors in quantum error correction. So, like uh, error correction um, tries to detect uh, the errors and uh, and by decoding errors, uh, we can uh, estimate the error and we can correct the errors. And uh, there are faults in decoding process. So yeah, we uh, call such errors decoding errors. Uh, I'll explain about this later. And uh, non clifford gate errors. So this is, uh, so when we, we directly apply T gates, and there are also errors uh, in that process. So, and that is due to noisy magic states. And uh, also gate decomposition errors, uh, such as Sorovic type errors. 
And uh, and I'd like to say uh, we can mitigate all three types of errors uh, with our methods. And uh, and as a result, it can significantly reduce the uh, uh, resource requirement in FTQC. And uh, yeah, and it can greatly save the uh, number of qubits. And uh, um, I'd like to uh, explain about the error mitigation technique we use. And uh, we use probabilistic error cancellation technique uh, in our technique. And so this was proposed by uh, IBM, uh, the first legendary paper about error mitigation. And uh, uh, so this method is like, uh, we can uh, counteract the effect of noise uh, by effectively constructing the uh, inverse of the noise. Okay. And uh, but the, in general, the inverse of the noise uh, is unphysical operation and we need to have the trick. Okay, and uh, uh, let's uh, let's calculate the inverse of the noise, uh, considering the example of the um, depolarizing error, and uh, by using some um, uh, some mathematical technique, uh, we can invert the um, depolarizing noise, and uh, yeah, and when we um, force every calculates the uh, uh, inverse of depolarizing noise. Uh, we can derive this one, uh, but uh, this has a negative value. So the probability becomes negative, and that that means this map is unphysical. So we need to have some trick. And the trick is like we post process the measurement outcome. So it's like, um, so suppose uh, we have the noise here. So this is the idea of okay, gate and the noise here. And uh, and because we'd like to counteract the effect of noise, and so we'd like to apply inverse operation to this map. And uh, when we do so, uh, we substitute this one to this. And uh, we can derive this formula. Yeah, we just substitute this here. And uh, if we derive this, the negative probability just became the uh, coefficient like this. So um, after we calculate the uh, uh, expectation value of O, uh, o is uh, target observable. Uh, when we calculate this and also this one, so uh, for calculating this, uh, we apply x, power x before the measurement. And we can similarly calculate uh, this term, this term. And uh, after we calculate these four terms, uh, we should just sum up these results uh, with appropriate coefficients. And as a result, we can calculate the um, ideal value, ideal uh, expectation value of the observable. And uh, but the, how to say, um, this is just for the single qubit case. We directly apply this in the quantum circuit. So in that case, um, we uh, randomly, uh, so sorry. Uh, so we'd like to apply this in the quantum circuit during the computation. And when we consider this scenario, uh, when we use, how to say, um, so and the uh, operations used in quantum error mitigation is I, X, Y, Z. And uh, when we uh, consider uh, I, X, Y, Z channel, uh, each after the gate, each after the noisy channels, the combination of the um, error mitigation operation becomes 4 to N, N is the number of the gate. So that is exponential, uh, and that cannot be performed actually. So we needed to have another uh, trick, and that is a Monte Carlo technique. So for doing this, um, we uh, rewrite uh, this one uh, in this way. So this gamma is uh, some coefficient uh, over one, 
and this P1 and P2 uh, are the probability. Uh, so we set the gamma such that this uh, P1 and uh, P2 satisfy the condition of probability. So uh, they sum up to unity. And uh, but uh, as I said, there was a negative sign. Uh, so and uh, just negative sign remains here. And the, uh, we can do the same calculation as this by using the Monte Carlo technique. Uh, so uh, how we how we do this is like uh, so obeying this formula. Um, we uh, gen uh, randomly generate the uh, identity operator or x y z operator following these probability distribution. So with probability P1, uh, we, oper uh, we apply uh, operation I, and uh, with probability P2, we apply X, Y, Z operations. And uh, we make such table. And uh, so this recovery operation indicates the operation we apply here. And, uh, and uh, the parity is, uh, <coughs> parity corresponds to the sign here. So the parity uh, identity operation has its plus one and the parity x, y, z uh, has minus one. And we also store the information parity here and we measure the results. And uh, we, um, we calculate the product of parity and the result here and we store this and we uh, we repeat this uh, procedure. So sometimes we uh, apply x, i, x, y, z, and we randomly generalize the recovery operations. And uh, we make such table. And we calculate the um, expectation value here. And uh, because we have the uh, overhead coefficient gamma here, we finally uh, multiply this gamma to the um, error free, uh, so, uh, the average of the product, we multiply this to the average of the product. And uh, this approximates the error free expectation value. Uh, this is, uh, this hmm, actually does the same thing as uh, uh, this one when we consider the expectation value of observable. But uh, by introducing this strategy, uh, we can uh, also apply this technique, a probabilistic error cancellation, uh, during the uh, circuit computation. So this is the same, like, so this is a noisy gate and the, each after the noisy gate, uh, we uh, apply the, um, some operations, uh, uh, operation for error mitigation and the operation is generated with the probability and uh, the probability corresponds to this one. And of course this changes depending on the noise model you uh, obtained in the experiment. And uh, they also have the parity, operation has the parity and we saw that. And also the operation has the cost, cost corresponded to this overhead coefficient, uh, which was applied. And, uh, and we uh, calculate the total cost as uh, a product of the cost of the, each quantum error mitigation. And uh, yeah. And also we calculate the total parity, uh, product of the parties. And, uh, and uh, we make the same table uh, after each uh, experimental run. And, uh, and we substitute this gamma with the total cost. And the parity becomes uh, uh, the product of the parity of the generated operation. And uh, yeah, and we make this table and we can apply probabilistic cancellation during the circuit execution. Okay, and uh, I'd like to explain the cost of the uh, error mitigation of probabilistic error cancellation. The cost of the probabilistic error cancellation is exponential. It's like, so as I said, the uh, cost of the error mitigation overhead coefficient of uh, error mitigation, probabilistic error cancellation is the product of the uh, each cost. Uh, cost for error mitigation. And uh, the cost of the error mitigation can be described as this one. 
And uh, A is uh, some uh, constant depending on the noise model. And uh, this epsilon is uh, error rate of the circuit. So like T1 and T2 strengths and so on. And uh, uh, when we calculate this, uh, it, it can be uh, approximated by exponential function like this. So, and uh, we uh, we have to finally uh, multiply this uh, overhead coefficient to the average of the binomial distribution. So the cost of the error mitigation is exponential. So like, uh, so actually from this, uh, we can say error mitigation uh, is not a scalable technique. And, uh, and this was proven for also as a error mitigation technique like extrapolation, budget distillation, and so on. And uh, the cost of the error mitigation here is uh, always exponential. Uh, but uh, um, the important thing is like when the error strength of error mitigation is around the unity, uh, the cost for error mitigation is moderate. So we, uh, when we uh, consider such regime, um, error mitigation is very powerful. And uh, in my view, um, uh, in fault tolerant quantum computing, uh, we have many, many parameters to tune. Uh, so we can find such regime in FTQC where quantum error mitigation is very powerful. On the other hand, um, the error rate of the NISC devices is fixed. Uh, and uh, so when we uh, apply error mitigation to NISC devices, the cost of error mitigation is exponential with the depth and the number of qubits. So I'm not sure uh, quantum error mitigation is uh, fully useful in uh, NISC devices in uh, quantum spare machine regime or something like that. But uh, in FTQC or early fault tolerant uh, computing error, definitely we can find such regime like quantum com uh, quantum error mitigation is very useful. So and the, uh, this is the motivation of our work. And the, this is a procedure of probabilistic error cancellation for general noise. Uh, and this is uh, one of the accomplishments in my paper. So it's like um, obtaining the error model. So we have to know the noise noise model uh, to invert, to counteract the effect of noise. So we have to know the noise model in advance. And we have to apply gate set tomography or tomography. And in my paper, I propose gate set tomography is a good way for characterizing noise. And the, we calculate the inverse of the noise process, uh, E inverse. And uh, this is done by using the uh, poly transfer matrix. And yeah. And uh, uh, we uh, also define the set of the um, operations used for quantum error mitigation. And we construct the inverse operation of the noise as a linear combination of the operations for a quantum error mitigation. And, uh, uh, and we uh, decompose this as this one. Uh, this is basically uh, the same as what I did. Um, here. So for for other types of noise, we do the same thing. And uh, we apply the probabilistic error cancellation by using the Monte Carlo technique by randomly generating the um, error mitigation operations and the post processing. And uh, yeah, and the general recipe for error mitigation uh, is shown in my paper. So if you are interested, uh, please uh, read my paper. Okay, and then let's move on uh, to consider the um, error mitigation for uh, for uh, FTQC for tolerant quantum computing. So, uh, so for uh, for discussing uh, FTQC, uh, let's consider the very simple example of three qubit code. And three qubit code is. Uh, Reading as this one. So one logical qubit is encoded with three physical qubits. And for also logical one, it's the same. And the state is a superposition of logical zero and logical one. And uh, we measure the uh, Z1, Z2, and D, Z2 and Z3 uh, by using answer qubits. And uh, this is called syndrome measurements. And uh, if there is no error, uh, no error, 
um, the result of the measurement of Z1, Z2, and Z2, Z3 is always one. And if there is an error in the first register, first qubit, uh, the state of answer is flipped. Uh, the first answer is flipped, and the result of Z1 and Z2 is like minus one plus one. And for qubit two, minus one, minus one, and qubit three. Also. So um, uh, following the information of the syndrome measurement of Z1 and Z2, uh, we can correct the error. But the problem is like, let's consider the case, there are two errors um, in the quantum states. In that case, uh, the state becomes like this. And the actually error correction algorithm uh, judges that there are two errors. Uh, there are just only one error here. So for example, in this case, actually what happened is like, uh, there was error in qubit one, qubit two, but the um, error correction algorithm thinks like there, there is error only qubit three. And uh, after decoding um, and the error correction, the, the state becomes like this. And uh, this is a uh, um, state like every qubit is flipped with power x operations. So, and this is called the decoding error. And uh, consider the case like uh, bit of prepared. Uh, and this is the error for, uh, so suppose the case like this error uh, operates on every qubit independently. So in that case, um, there are events like uh, there are two errors and three errors. And uh, actually uh, that leads to the decoding error like this. And uh, for suppressing such decoding error, um, when we just use error correction, we have to just increase uh, uh, code distance, uh, the number of physical qubits uh, to encode one logical qubit. But uh, that is experimentally uh, demanding. So our proposal is like, uh, let's use uh, probabilistic error cancellation in FTQC as well. So in that case, we can, uh, if we have the information of the decoding error, uh, we can construct the uh, inverse operation of the uh, logical error, decoding error, and uh, we can relate this as this one, and we can apply the same recipe of the quantum error mitigation, probabilistic error cancellation uh, to FTQC as well, uh, that significantly reduce the requirement of the code distance, like that. And the, um, up to now, I just explained about the case of the bit preparers, but uh, we can also apply this technique to a uh, more general case. So in that case, um, uh, the decoding error uh, becomes a um, combination of the logical X, logical Y, logical Z error. And in, in, in this case, we can easily construct the uh, inverse operation by using the, by only using the logical identity X, Y, Z operations. And uh, we can apply probabilistic error cancellation if we have the information of the uh, decoding error and we have to apply. And also uh, for obtaining uh, information of er decoding error, we have to apply um, gate set tomography or uh, process tomography and so on. And uh, so this is a case of the, um, general case, but uh, I just ask, uh, ignore the noise in uh, syndrome measurements, but uh, if, uh, we also show that even in the case of the, even in the presence of the syndrome measurements, the noise channel can be effectively written as, uh, effectively written as this, uh, the combination of the logical identity XYZ operation, even in the syndrome measurement uh, errors, even in the presence of the syndrome measurement. So, and, and uh, anyway, uh, we can apply uh, inverse of the uh, decoding error by using a probabilistic error cancellation on the code space and we can efficiently reduce the errors. And uh, yeah, the cost of the quantum error mitigation is like, so suppose the code distance is D and, the one, and in that case, when we consider the surface calls, the one logical operation consists of the D cycles so uh, in this case, uh, cycle indicates uh, uh, one cycle of error detection 
required for error recovery. So we have to have enough information for decoding errors. And the cycle is one cycle of the uh, detection of the errors. And the, uh, suppose the uh, case of the code distance D and the uh, logical operation consists of the D cycles. Uh, in this case, uh, when we uh, calculate the decode, uh, decoding errors for D cycles, we can uh, write down as this. And the P cycle, uh, uh, error probability for one cycle can be written as this one. And this C1 and C2 are some constants. And this, the important value is this one. P is a physical error. And PTH is a threshold value of the error correction. And uh, so when we increase the code distance, uh, the error for cycle uh, exponentially reduces depending on the uh, code distance D. And uh, we can also calculate the error probability for one uh, for D cycles. And uh, yeah, this is a little bit complicated, but uh, you can think uh, this is just the logic uh, error probability for one gate. And uh, uh, we can calculate the uh, error probability for one, one gate can be uh, written as a function of D. Okay. And yeah, anyway, we can write down this one. And uh, um, so error mitigation cost, uh, of uh, gamma uh, can be written as this one. So uh, basically, uh, when we consider the um, error correction, um, almost all error converted to power errors. And uh, uh, in that case, what we need to do is, uh, what uh, the error mitigation operation required is just power operation, more specifically logical power operations. And in that case, we can simply calculate the uh, uh, overhead for error, error mitigation for uh, for one logical gate, and this can be written as this one. And the, the cost of the quantum error mitigation becomes like this. And uh, there is a, a clearly the trade off between the error rate and the error mitigation cost. So when we uh, decrease the value of P, uh, the uh, probability, of course, the uh, for uh, error mitigation cost reduces. Yeah, this is very natural. And uh, also when we increase the code distance, we can also reduce the uh, error mitigation cost. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if, we con if we increase the uh, cost of the error mitigation, the sampling cost, the sampling budget, we can also decrease the code distance. So there is a trade-off like this. And this is and the decoding is a number of the logical gates. Okay, and this is how something cost becomes uh, uh, like this the square of the, this gamma factor. Anyway, there is a trade off between the code distance and this uh, error mitigation sampling cost. So, this is a very important um, message from our work. And we can also apply error mitigation for non crippled uh, gate operation as well. So when we you know, uh, apply T gate, which is required in FPQC for universal operation, um, so T gate uh, can be, uh, T gate is performed with teleportation of the uh, some specific state called magic states, and the magic state has noise. So even in that case, we can just apply inverse of the noise and we can teleport the state. And for also noise characterization, uh, like for, we also show that for crippled gate, uh, we can uh, uh, efficiently uh, characterize the uh, uh, noise in a crippled gate. So for, uh, when we consider power errors uh, with uh, error rate efficient, the sampling cost for ca noise characterization for crippled gate is uh, all epsilon inverse. Uh, for T gates, the sampling cost is become like this. And uh, um, also, uh, the also other important thing is like um, there is a technique for the power frame uh, in error correction uh, in fault tolerance quantum uh, computing. And that is like actually we have to we do not have to apply power operations physically in uh, FTQC uh, because um, mainly um, the 
uh, gates used for computing is clipboard operations in FTQC, uh, except for the magical state of teleportation. And in that case, um, when we apply power operations, uh, by using the uh, Daniel Gottesman theory, uh, we can um, uh, move uh, power operation uh, backwards uh, by using the Daniel Gottesman theory, uh, which allows us to calculate the um, conjugate of the clickboard operation for power operators. So in that case, um, the P, power operation uh, goes backwards. And uh, this Z means uh, um, measurement in Z basis. And if this P prime uh, is uh, X, Y operations, we, uh, we should just flip the experimental results. And if P is uh, a D, uh, Z operation uh, does not change the uh, measurement outcome of the uh, measurement in depth basis, so we do, we do nothing. So in error mitigation, um, we apply power operations. Um, but uh, actually, the power operation can be virtually applied uh, in this way. So this is also important aspect of our work. And then when we also, uh, and we consider the teleportation of T-gate, uh, we just um, uh, flip the result of the uh, uh, measurement uh, depending on the content of the power frame. Um, and uh, whether this S gate is applied or not uh, is uh, accordingly determined. And uh, yeah, this is a schematic I explained. Like, so we have the uh, recovery operation due to error correction. And also, we also have the error mitigation operation here. But uh, this just updates the power frame. So we should just flip the uh, measurement outcomes. So we do not have to apply power operation physically. Okay. And finally, we also have Solovic type approximation errors. Um, yeah. And uh, so every gate, arbitrary gate, uh, single qubit gate can be decomposed with uh, T, H, and S. And uh, yeah, T gates are. Uh, uh, sometimes it's very demanding. So we'd like to uh, deduce the number of T gates. And in that case, uh, there is uh, uh, algorithmic errors uh, due to the insufficiency of T gates. Um, and, but uh, by characterizing the you know, gate decomposition errors uh, in advance, and this, uh, this can be efficiently done on classical computer. And by doing so, we can just uh, construct the inverse map of the gate decomposition errors, and uh, we can apply error mitigation. And yeah, and basically the uh, noise is, uh, uh, and uh, actually in my PRX paper, um, I found the universal basis, which can decompose arbitrary errors, arbitrary, uh, the inverse of arbitrary errors. And by doing, uh, by using this um, universal Clifford basis, uh, we can, uh, also uh, mitigate arbitrary get decomposition errors. And this is uh, kind of, this also the indicates the trade-off. Uh, when we use, uh, when we increase the number of the T gates we can use, um, we can reduce uh, uh, error mitigation costs. So on the other hand, we can say by increasing the um, error mitigation cost, uh, we can reduce the uh, uh, required T gate. And there is a trade-off. And we also show that you know we can also uh, we also suggested some quantum er, uh, quantum phase estimation algorithms, which is compatible with um, our technique. If you are interested, please read our paper. And um, overall, we can uh, reduce the error uh, on FTQC. And then when we use uh, error mitigation, uh, the the number of errors, the number of errors uh, around the unity is allowed, so we can um, reduce. Uh, sorry, we can uh, alleviate the hardware requirement in this way. And uh, this is also a more, how to say, concrete result. 
Uh, the horizontal axis is a number of logical gates, and the horizontal axis is, uh, sorry, particular axis is a cold distance. And uh, this red indicates the case of um, the required accuracy is like uh, this one. So the total number of errors should be reduced to 10 to minus 4. And uh, in this case, 10 to minus 3 and 10 to minus 2. And uh, uh, this, uh, this shows the case of the NE equal 1. The number of errors is unity. And this is allowed because error mitigation can efficiently uh, mitigate the uh, uh, error, like total number of error in quantum circuit unity. Uh, that is, uh, regime error mitigation can be efficiently used. So uh, we brought this one, and we can we can see that um, the photo distance uh, required is significantly reduced, com uh, uh, especially com uh, compared with the uh, case of uh, total uh, number of error uh, is restricted to 10 to minus 4. And the, um, so, for example, when we consider the uh, quantum supremacy regime with uh, logical, uh, logical, sorry, with uh, logical gate number is 10 to 4, the code distance is uh, reduced to uh, 4, from, uh, 4 from 9. Uh, when we as, uh, assume the, this green line. And the um, qubit uh, reduction count is 80%. And uh, when we uh, consider the useful application in FTQC, like uh, the total uh, uh, gate count is 10 to 10. And even in this regime, the code distance is uh, reduced from, from 90 to 14 the number of qubits is reduced by 45%. So this is a uh, um, uh, result like, so this is the uh, number of logical gates. And uh, so this is a uh, ratio, um, uh, how the number of qubits is reduced. So yeah, so when we consider the, this green line, uh, in the case of uh, logical, num uh, logical gates, yes. Uh, 10 to 4, uh, the number of uh, qubits required uh, becomes a 20% or something like that. So this is a significant reduction. Okay. And uh, these days we also um, propose error uh, mitigation for bosonic codes. So if you are interested, uh, please read uh, this paper as well. And yeah, like in bosonic codes, uh, the state uh, is represented with a big enough function. And uh, in the presence of noise, the uh, uh, interference fringe disappears, but uh, by using the ramification called symmetric expansion, the uh, interference fringe can be recovered. And uh, sorry, um, the time is uh, coming, so, but I'd like to uh, slightly talk about uh, error mitigation for methodology. Um, so, in meteorology, um, what we, uh, what we do is like estimate uh, some uh, parameter uh, by using the state uh, as a probe, and we interact with this uh, probe state with uh, um, some field like magnetic field or electric field and so on. Um, usually, uh, magnetic field is considered in this field, and uh, the magnetic magnetic field is described uh, with omega, and uh, we uh, measure some observable, and we uh, calculate the average of some data. And uh, actually there is uh, some theoretical prediction which uh, bridges the uh, average of the data and the parameters. So by using this relationship, uh, we can solve this one, this, and the, from this relationship, we can estimate the parameter omega from the experimental results. And uh, for example, sing, uh, when we use a single qubit to gaze, a single qubit uh, to measure uh, parameter omega in this Hamiltonian, um, we prepare a plus state and uh, evolve the state uh, like this. And uh, the state has the information of omega like this. And uh, we uh, perform uh, plus y measurement. 
uh, sorry, uh, we perform the uh, Y measurement and uh, it can be described as this. And, uh, and actually um, this is a um, expectation value, but uh, actually the actually experimental result has a short noise. So these are the different one. So this has a short noise and this is the exact expectation value. And by using this relationship, we relate the uh, experimental results and the estimated parameters, this one. And by doing this, we can estimate the uh, magnetic field as a parameter omega here. And uh, actually, uh, the important point of the uh, quantum methodology is like, when we increase the number of the qubits in the probed state, uh, we can um, uh, decrease the uh, um, uh, appearance of the estimator. And so when we use the uh, L-separable qubits, um, the scaling factor is becomes one. And when you know uh, we use uh, L entangled qubits like GHZ state without noise, uh, this uh, factor becomes uh, two. Uh, L is a number of qubits. But uh, in the presence of noise, um, there is a uh, um, uh, discrepancy uh, between the theoretical pred prediction and what is happening in the uh, experiments. So yeah, in that case, like you know, the theoretical prediction becomes wrong. X and Y becomes a different one, and uh, that gives a uh, uh, wrong estimation of the parameter, and that is called systematic errors. And our strategy is like, uh, uh, we should apply error mitigation in that case. And uh, when we use uh, error mitigation, like uh, the theoretical prediction, uh, will becomes a uh, will become closer to the uh, actual one. So error mitigation should be used. And uh, we propose, yeah, what is happening here? So yeah, the estimation of the uh, omega uh, becomes close to the actual one and the scaling becomes better. And uh, our proposal is let's use a uh, uh, virtual distillation technique as a error mitigation because um, virtual distillation can mitigate errors without knowing the noise model. But uh, yeah, in in the typical scenario of meteorology, uh, there should be some uh, unknown noise. So, much distribution can be used in the scenario. So, and the result is like we could recover the scaling. So, yeah, much distribution is a good thing. Uh, sorry. Um, the explanation of the uh air mitigation for meteorology was not so how to say uh kind, but uh. The time is coming, so if you have more time, maybe I can give you more detailed explanation. But uh, if time is restricted, maybe I can have two or three questions. And uh... Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Endo. <clears throat> so, thanks, uh, Dr. Endo, for this nice talk. So, uh, do we uh, is there any question from the participant side? Yeah, uh, hello, Dr. Uh, uh, I, can you, yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. So, I wanted to ask that uh, since you are like uh, we are looking at the one by ng uh, error rate mark for the uh, gate error, right? So should we look at it like we have error threshold in the connection? Uh, sorry, um, maybe the connection is not so good. So sorry, I could not hear you very clearly. Could could you slowly ask the question? So, sorry. Yeah. So what I mean is that uh, the one by ng gate error that we require for the mean error rate to be of the constant order, right? Ah, uh, uh, right. Yes. Uh, so, so you are asking the constraints of the quantum error mitigation or something like Yes, so the one by ng mark that we require for the gate error. So should we look at it like we have error threshold in quantum error correction? That uh, we require... 
uh, like, uh, so, so threshold, actually there is no threshold in quantum error mitigation. Uh, but uh, how to say, uh, but uh, how to say, there is a kind of the allowed budget of the sampling. So for example, sometimes, you know, um, we can, perhaps we can uh, perform the 100 times more experiments, but uh, uh, of course we cannot perform uh, 1 billion times more experiments, right? Yes. And uh, um, error mitigation uses uh, sampling overhead as a resource. And in that case, it, like, um, depending on the allowed sampling budget, uh, there is the total, uh, there is a kind of the restricted amount of the um, error, uh, which can be uh, reduced with quantum error mitigation. So, and uh, in that case, um, I set the kind of the allowed number of uh, errors in quantum error mitigation is uh, one or two. Uh, because in this regime, the uh, sampling over overhead is becomes like 100 times more or something like that. And that is tolerable. So, yeah. And actually, there is no clear threshold in quantum error mitigation, but uh, there is, there is error, um, experimental restrictions. So that is effectively threshold, uh, I believe. But uh, there is a new paper uh, discussing about the threshold in uh, quantum error mitigation by discussing the relationship between error mitigation and the phase transitions uh, by considering the error mitigation for continuous process, time time continuous process. So maybe that paper should be led by you. I, I'm not sure, but uh, sorry, my, my question, uh, my answer is clear for you. Yeah, I guess. Uh, thank you very okay, much. So another thing I wanted to ask is that uh, the cost scaling is, uh, we are saying that it is exponential to the mean error rate. So, yes, uh, yes, yes, exponential. So, like it quickly, it quickly diverges. So, so that indicates uh, error mitigation uh, ha has to be carefully applied in the regime it can be efficiently used. So, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one, this one. Uh, so is this, is this clear? Yeah. So, uh, so does this uh, cost not depend on like the noise model and it only depends on the error rate of the system, like whatever the noise model will be? Uh, actually, the, uh, the, how to say, uh, the basic behavior is the same, but the, depending on the noise model, the constant A is different. Okay. So, yeah. Mm, yeah. So that depends on the noise model, actually. The cost is depends on the noise model. But for every noise model, it will be uh, an exponential behavior. Uh, yeah, I, as far as I know, yeah, for every noise, it, it should be exponential. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's interesting that the, how to say, the scaling does, does not become exponential, but I believe it is a kind of very tricky noise model or something like that, so. But it is an interesting question. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> is there any other question? Mm, I have one question. Can I ask? Yes, yes, please. Sure. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, in one of your slides, you mentioned about tomography. Mm -hmm. So my question is, uh, what type of benefits one can obtain uh, by using quantum state tomography in the problems of quantum error correction. Um. So tomography. So which slides you mean? Um. Perhaps this one. Sorry, this is very. Uh, uh, yes. Right. And. Uh, so my. Uh, sorry, your question is like how quantum error. Sorry, how tomography is useful for quantum error correction? You mean? Uh, yes, usually uh, quantum state tomography is used to reconstruct elements of density matrix. Mm -hmm. So in your case, how, uh, what benefits you will get uh, by I using? See. Mm -hmm. ah, I see. So like, so in our case, uh, we uh, apply the tomography uh, for the process. And uh, 
so we so basically we uh, apply the uh, process tomography and the gate set or gate set tomography and uh, by doing so uh, we can construct the noise model noise model for the error and uh, we can apply the inverse operation of the noise by using quantum error mitigation so tomography is necessary in necessary for quantum error mitigation and uh, in our new paper uh, we applied the error mitigation for uh, error corrected regime and uh, that we can reduce okay. the decoding error so and uh, usually uh, for reducing decoding errors we have to increase the code distance but by considering the hybrid architecture of error mitigation and error correction we do not uh, we can we also have the alternative for suppressing the errors uh, which is quantum error mitigation and that, that can replace the uh, some code distance uh, so that that can transform the code distance to sampling cost of the um, error mitigation so and that can reduce the code distance required for computation so my my, my answer is clear for you or thank you maybe. okay so thanks <clears throat> to the speaker again uh, for his uh, beautiful clarification and uh, talk so thanks dr Endo. <clears throat> Ah, thank you very much. If you have questions, uh, maybe you can ask me with email or something like that. Uh, anyway, I uh, thank you very much for giving me a very nice opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> so uh, our next speaker is Professor Anirban Patak. <clears throat> University Berlin. He joined GIIT 